started acting as though the wing had stalled and it was something we haven't been expecting. I'm going a little farther forward, uh, stab trim. Why? That'll get faster. Uh, we think you'll end up faster with that beam. Yeah, I know, I'm in a dilemma here. My only option was coming back and landing heavier than we'd ever been before, or go fly this mission and possibly have really bad handling qualities. There's really pretty lousy lateral directional control one. If he lights the rocket and loses control, Pete could end up too far away to glide home, or worse. But landing without burning off the solid rubber fuel is an even riskier option. The airplane is going to be so tail heavy that you'll be landing with a stick all the way forward and you'll be going 150 or 160 knots when you touch down. And if you don't make a smooth landing, it's all over. I want to get rid of that fuel. I agree. Pete had a concern for the airplane's flying qualities just as it came off of the White Knight. We think it should go. We felt it was a lot safer for him to fire the motor than to land with a full load of fuel. Okay, I'm sure it's coming. Roger. Three, two, one, mark. Spaceship One's momentum carries Pete up to 105,000 feet. All systems are green, Pete. How you doing? Great. The sky is dark. Six Higher than Brian, sunny. but short of the goal for the flight. All systems green, Pete. Good shape. Someone asked Warner Von Braun, who's my hero, my mentor. Another coming. Someone asked him what's the most difficult thing about going to the moon. Copy. And he says the will to do it. The engineering is just calculations, but the decision and the will and the courage to try to do it is the most difficult hurdle. Apogee 105. As Pete descends in feather, air approaching supersonic velocity flows over parts of the craft. Picking up uh, lots of rumbling here, 55 knots. Lots of side to side oscillations. Pete dumps the remaining liquid nitrous oxide. Copy, 0.83 Mach 378,000. Due to the ignition delay, Spaceship One did not reach the sound barrier on re entry as they had hoped. Suggest you start out of feather, Pete. Feather coming out. We didn't go as high as we wanted to. Uh, slow and moving. And we didn't get our supersonic re entry. So we didn't reach all of our goals. And uh, airport's 11 o'clock now, 12 miles. Inside. Copy, how you done? Good. Gear's coming. He drops the recently repaired landing gear and makes his approach. Looking good. Five, two, one push. Perfect, Pete. Beautiful job. Great job, everyone. <laughs> Super. That's a good I went, we're you thinking, man, need a super job, man. This is, but oh, this, man. When you said dilemma, I said, a real dilemma to be landing with all that fuel. <laughs> well, no, that was the dilemma. <laughs> it's the best landing, man. I can't wait to see the footage. That was a great landing. Yeah, yeah. see it all the way to the top. Yeah. Yeah. Got a lot of respect for you. I mean, the plume looked very straight. Yeah, it is very, and, and it looks like you you corrected past vertical to get back on. The motor runs so smoothly. No Thank you. I, you. It's know, not loud. <laughs> it's not loud. It's not loud. I didn't yeah. think it would. You know, I thought I thought, wow, that just felt like somebody tipped me on my back, and that was the rule. A lot of things were exactly how I thought they would be. A lot of things were just no big deal whatsoever, and I would made them a big deal early on. Okay, deep breath. The hardest part was to take what we do in the sim where we just sort of let it do its thing, to be in the real vehicle and just let it ride itself out. With a harder road ahead than expected, Pete's piloting skills inspire the group. Oh, so perfect. <laughs> After today, people are being scraped off the ceiling, I think, uh, quite literally. Today's flight really does get our feet back on the ground running, and yeah, there's still challenges, but we expect challenges because it's a uh, space flight.
After seven glides and two rocket-powered flights, Spaceship One faces another hurdle. During this year and a half or so of motor development, our spaceship got a little heavier. The changes in the tail fixed the stall problem, but they added weight. Rattan begins to question whether he has the power necessary to reach the X-Prize. There's a lot of ways to get more altitude out of the spaceship, but the easiest one is just to take a pound out of the spaceship. If we can figure out how to make it a pound lighter, it goes another 150 feet or so higher. You know, areas like this where there's a lot of beef because the spars there. For the job outside. of taking weight out of the plane falls to engineer Matt Steinmetz. They took out all the wiring that wasn't being used. Well, that was four and a half pounds right there. Wow. Yeah, that's what I said. With the weight optimized, the pressure is back on the rocket and John Campbell. Several months ago, we thought that the motor we had at that point was plenty to get to the X Prize goal. But since then, we've got a lot more data. And we said, you know what, we're not quite there. So we had to add a few more pounds of fuel. We're just pushing everything right, right to the limit. Their data shows more thrust, but the unstable burn could make for a very wild ride for the pilot. Anticipating the multiple gravitational forces he'll face during tomorrow's flight, Mike squeezes in some last-minute physical training. Here we go. I felt that I needed a little more unusual attitude recovery practice. I pull it up as high as we go and just let it fall backwards, and then try to figure out where I was at and get it straight. Up rudder, four, six, one, two, recover. Good. That is disorienting. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Also, I wanted to do some G tolerance buildup. That's seven and a half, good one. I feel great, ready to go. The third powered flight of Spaceship One will burn the motor for 55 seconds, go higher than 40 miles, and most important, test the feather at supersonic speed. It's an aggressive envelope expansion. It'll be the first time we're supersonic with the feather up. It's going to be the, the highest Mach number that the spaceship has been to on the way up and on the way down. It's going to definitely be the highest altitude. They'll be going faster and higher and hotter than ever. Several pinstripes of temperature-sensitive wax will tell them how hot the lead surfaces of the plane become. Ready, Steve? A rifle bullet out of an M16 goes 2,700 feet per second. There go the shots. We're going to go 3,400 feet per second. That's two-thirds of a mile every second. And if you look at that vehicle, it doesn't look like it could go that fast. It's just made out of fabric with some epoxy glued to it to keep it stiff. It's got plastic windows, and it's going faster than a bullet. There's some risk involved there. The last-minute rituals of flying fill the moments before departure. Some seem ordinary and unconscious, and some don't. You've been married 43 years. <laughs> That's a long time. I wouldn't trade anything I've done for anybody else's love. See you soon. See you soon. As White Knight carries Spaceship One up to launch altitude, Mike prepares himself by visualizing the coming 55-second rocket burn. White Knight, Joshua, on mission. You're really fighting for your life there, it seems like. At least in the sim, you're paying extremely close attention to the Tanu guidance system, which tells you which direction you're going. You've got to have your eye glued to the screen. You can't be looking out of the windows or anything. You have to keep that anticipation vector pointed straight up. 316 status. 16s go for release and ignition. Flying 70 or 80 flights in the simulator. Some of them killed me, others of them were successful. 10 seconds. Hey, uh, good luck, uh, Mike, on this. Two, five, seven. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one, one. Clean release. Sim feels good. I'm